All right, hello everybody. So it's it's been uh, a week, and as as was mentioned, as I mentioned last week when we were doing Hour of uh, Devastation, uh, this week is finally when Dominaria is opened up as a draft format on Magic Arena. And seeing as we've got a pile of gems and gold sitting around, we're going to go ahead and jump in and do a couple. So I'll, I'll probably do one or two tonight, and then over the weekend maybe a couple more is my, my plan for this. But hello, it is just me here today. Uh, tonight, I suppose. Could be today for you, I don't know if you're watching on the VOD, hello. But yeah, so I guess we'll get to see what everybody else kind of believes of this format and what the AI believes. I think that's going to be the most pressing question on my mind. Is what does the AI believe as far as uh, the Dominaria draft format goes? Like, are we going to... Like, what, what are we going to see? Are we going to see things that... Uh... That 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 aren't I don't know I guess we'll, let's let's see what we fi we find here. Are we going to see like the AI passing Thorn Elementals? Are we going to see ah cider? Hello to Cuboid, Massazaw, Hydrite, Mega Marky. Glad to see y'all here. Arbolt, hello. So yeah, let's jump on in and see how things go. Oh, I guess this is, uh, if you watched the last Dominaria draft on MTGO, this card might be familiar to you. The Forebear's Blade. This bear, this blade was forged out in the forest by four bears. Uh, they say these four bears were the, ma the were masters of their craft. They made a blade that uh, could be picked up by anyone, as long as the previous owner had died. Ah, thank you for the sub, Blood Fashion. Ah, Pineapple and Clementine Cider. Uh, Raph is really strong, too. Um, Blessed Light, Skin Witch, Jousting Lance. But really, the, the, the Forebear Blade... Uh, Gets us the ability to not have to pick a color. So. Oh. Oh dear. A creature that wears the forebear blade real strong. Sarah Angel is a, as you, you might know. A card from ancient magic. Sarah Angel has been around since the beginning. And is still very strong. Other cards of note in here. Tetsuko Umazawa. Hands off unblockability to creatures with one or less one or less power or toughness. Uh, Memorial to War has Corona hanging out there and blows up a land. Nothing else here is kind of low impact. Okay, so here's an idea. And let, let's just kind of take a look at this. There is a red, white, or like aura equipment sub theme. And this could put us in it with a strong piece of equipment, strong white creature. Who knows? I just want to show all the cards there. Anyway, Warcry Phoenix. Uh, whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you can pay three and return to play, tap and attacking. We also have Joyra's Familiar, a different four mana 2 2 flyer that is a uh, really cool uh, owl. Uh, the Honor Guard. I'll note that there is an uncommon and rare missing from this pack. I'm kind of noting for the uh, Shivan Fire, eh? What is the viability of an all-crab deck? In Limited, we won't be able to pull that off. There are not enough crabs. There's just the one Homerid. Um If you had a bunch of that Homerid, I guess you could just mill somebody out. But Okay, I'm actually thinking about Shivan Fire. Uh, this would give us uh, sort of the direction I mentioned. Like a red-white, aggressive deck that can make use of auras. Obviously, Sarah Angel is not a top-end is a top end sort of thing. But, uh... Is a very strong top-end sort of thing. I think that's fair. There's a lot of red in here, too. Let's pick up Shivan Fire. 
Thorn Elemental. That's a str so yeah. Here's the one I was talking about: the Homerid Explorer. This is the crab, or I guess the Homerid, which is different than crab. Call the Cavalry. Ooh, okay. Call the Cavalry is a nice common. Uh, it's four mana for four power and toughness of creatures. Uh, the fact that it's split among bodies is actually quite good for our fo the four bear blade. Uh, the four ba the bears like that. Uh, Keldon Overseer is nice too, but I think the Call the Cavalry fits in well. Thorn Elemental is also very strong. We've played a lot with this card. Sergeant at Arms, Final Parting. Final Parting is search for two cards, one in hand, one in grave. Uh, Sergeant at Arms is... Uh... Could you explain the cost of things in this game? I feel like I'm not exactly following what is cheap, hard, expensive to play. Sure. So, let's take a look at... Uh... So, yeah, you might be used to uh, how... I, I, again, you're, you're familiar with eternal stat lines, and the fact that you start with a higher health total and that you have a bit difference of a, a, a bit of difference there uh, means that bodies are slightly bigger in that game. Sarah Angel, for instance, here is a uh, five mana, so three colorless and two white. Um, so in, in eternal, your, your your sigils give you like a threshold in magic. Planes just is white mana. You need so you need to use two planes and three of any to to play Sarah Angel, and it's a four four flying, which is is flying, and vigilance, which is uh, endurance, is the closest keyword in uh, Eternal. We might want some creatures without vigilance. Yeah, I mean we're not getting full use out of the forebear's blade, if if we are, but it's still good enough. Anyway, I'm gonna pick Sergeant at Arms here. Sergeant at Arms here is uh, effectively on curve as a 3 cost 2-3 two, with the ability to on 6 give us 2-1-1 one, one tokens. Uh, we have the go wide plan again and the blade to pay off it. So, uh, Okay, Lingering Phantom. Um, Bloodstone Goblin. Okay. Whenever you cast a spell, if that spell was kicked, uh, such as the Sergeant at Arms or Shivan Fire, plus 1, plus 1 in Menace. Uh, dub hands off plus two plus two and first strike. Um, and rampaging cyclops is fine as well. I think I'm gonna go with bloodstone goblin. Opt board of the weatherlight. I don't like this card very much. Uh, Kelden Raider is actually pretty nice. I like this card a lot for filtering late. Turn a land into a card. And it's a decent enough body. Radiating Lightning is a card I want one of on a sideboard, but this is a best of one format, not a best of three. So that's not a card I care about. Knight of New Benalia. Navigator. Navigator's Compass is one of the worst cards in the set. Thelad Omnivore is pretty good. I'm a big knight of New Benalia. This gives us a, a, a early curve. If I change this this way, you can see our curve a little better. This will give us a second two drop. This will be our opening pack back. We see there's still some blue going on with Talarian Scholar of No Text. Opt. Rescue. Kalio Skin Witch still here. I wonder if they if the AIs aren't valuing black. That's a pretty... I value this pretty highly. Yeah, I'm getting the feeling that black is not being valued at all by the uh, the AIs. Let's perhaps take advantage of that. I'm going to pick up uh, Divest. Corsan Druid late as well. Really? Interesting. I know white is color one. I don't know what color two is anymore. It's it, there's too much going on to 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 call. All right, our rare is the Mirari Conjecture. Uh, the way this card works uh, is that it, when it comes into play, you'll get the instant back at the beginning of your set, first turn. You'll get the sorcery back on um, the third the the third turn. You'll get copy every instant sorcery you play. Strong card in some specific decks. 
Arvad the Cursed is a cool card with uh, handing off legends plus two plus two, but we don't have any. Shield of the Realm could give us, again, going in on that equipment theme. I don't know if I've played with this card. I'm interested to see how good it is. Like, on the one hand, it's basically saying plus two toughness, but it's also saying immunity to a lot of removal. I don't know, maybe it's not as good as... Uh, Avon Sentry is here as well, and Sergeant at Arms number two. I think it's between those three. I might be... Hmm. Is white equipment themed in general in this set? Uh, in Magic the Gathering... Uh, colors tend to have different theming, at least mechanically, based on, like, the set it's in. In this set, red and white have a, uh, equipment and aura theme going on, which when we find a card, I'll kind of see that. I'll be able to show that a little more. But that's not necessarily how that works in every set. Such as in Ixalan, red and white was a, were dinosaurs, which liked to be damaged. Would that ability reduce even more for... Yeah, yeah, whenever a source would deal damage, it reduces that damage. Even Sentry. Should I just trust, trust in the Flyer? Let's trust in the Flyer. Kazarov! Sengir Pureblood. That's real expensive. Kazarov. Never opponent, creature your opponent controls dealt damage. Full plus one plus one counter on Kazarov. Four deal two damage. Dauntless bodyguard. Call the cavalry. Bailoth. Academy Drake. I like Dauntless bodyguard a lot. I like having a good one drop in a deck like this. And this is a good one drop that does a lot later. Like if I draw this late, I can put it on and make like Sarah Angel unblockable. Also, the sack ability means that Forebear's blade can move at any time. Sorry, Kazarov. Joda Archmage Eternal. You may pay Wooberg. Spore Crown Thalid. Thorn Elemental number two. Dub. Get two Chronicler. Maybe green is a better way to go. Maybe I should pick that up. Hmm. I'd be giving up Sarah's Disciple, which is plus uh, two mana, one one first strike. Whenever you cast a historic spell, uh, a legend, an artifact, or a saga gets plus one plus one. That thing's pretty good with the blade. Kind of have to decide if I want to go into green here, and this is, I think, the decision point. I can look at Spore Crown Thalad and Thorn Elemental and Bailoff Gorger and Adventurer's Impulse. All four, like, cards I would be very, very happy to include in a deck. And they're all here. I think that's reasonable. Now, do I want to, what would I want to go with? Would I want to go Bailoff Gorger? What's my curve look like? I might want to go with that Spore Crown Thalad. I already have a Thorn Elemental. That... Seems unnecessary. Okay. Half hazard bombardment. It's a very silly card. Another bloodstone goblin? Hmm. I don't know. Jousting Lance. This is Ruinous Blast. I don't think I can play this. I don't have any legends. Dub. Let me go with Dub. I don't have one of those. Oh my god! It's like all the same stuff. Spore Crown, Thalid, Thorn Elemental, Adventures, Impulse, Mammoth, Spider. Nobody. Okay, green is wide. Alright, let's 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 accept this. I'm gonna grab the shield to try it out. Sarah's Disciple. Another shield. I don't know if I actually want to. Thorn Elemental. Okay, so there is another green picking at the table. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Thorn Elemental on the wheel, number two. Charge, Gaia Protector, Adventurer's Impulse. Wow, Adventurer's Impulse last pick? That is not something that really is realistic. Alright, let's... Sorry, Bloodstone Goblin. Alright, another Sarah Angel. Ooh, okay. So I want to find some sort of green ramp to make this deck function a little better. But I like where we are. I might actually play the Broken Bond for that. Uh, there are a lot of artifacts and enchantments that this effect is worth playing in the main deck. So yeah, let's pick up Sarah Angel. Right of Bezlin Lock is a cool card too. For two turns, it makes a bunch of O1s, and then it makes this 6-6 demon, flying demon that asks you to sacrifice a creature every turn. Derigaz Reincarnated. Flying Trample Haste. If it would die, exile the three egg counters on it. Egg. At the beginning of your upkeep, if Derigaz is exiled with an egg, egg on it, remove an egg from it. Then if Derigaz has no eggs on it, return to the battlefield. Mesa Unicorn as a two-drop. That would actually be a pretty cool carrier of my Forebear Blade. Now, they, they, like, it's sad. If I had seen Derigaz earlier, I would probably go with those. Is this one of those Elder Dragons? No. Derigaz is a primal. Uh, primordial, sorry. Uh, there's a card in, you know, I'll, I'll actually just go grab the card for you. Uh, just let me get to the card quick. Unowned, please. Um, rare. Primeval. Primeval's Glorious Rebirth is uh, about Derigaz and the other four Primevals. Not Primordials. Uh, that's Derigaz, Krosis, um, Rith. Uh, oh, God, what's the other two? Rith the Awakener, Krosis. Anyway, they're from Invasion. Did you know I could just do this? Anywho, goodbye, Dare guys. Dromar, yes, Dromar. Joseph Vets, Lich Knight, and a Bailoth. We got the Bailoth. There goes the empty one. There's some black going around in here. Even Sentry, another one of those. Ooh, actually, I want the Gift of Growth. I want a combat trick in this deck. Uh, Adela's Memorial to War, Tragic Poet, more Bailoth, Gift of Growth. I like more Bailoth. Hey, Spore Swarm. Good, we have a, we do have the Spore Crown Thalids, and I want some tokens for them. We have two of them. They give all your fungus and saplings plus one plus one, and this makes three saplings at instant speed. Uh, Memorial to Unity. I actually think that's a cool include. All right, from here, we're in the, the, the end here. So let's just pick up cards. Wow. All right. So let's go ahead and build this in reverse. That's my game plan is I want to build this deck in the reverse order and see how it plays out. So Memorial to Unity we'll put in late. So let's start things out with... Uh, Sarah Angels, mm, get out of there, Divest. We'll start things off with our main core. No, I don't think the worm is core. Okay, the 
Bodyguard, the Knight, the Unicorn. I'm gonna play Dub. This is looking near complete. So, sorry, things have been moving very quickly because I'm just adding cards. Okay, so we're playing uh, Dauntless Bodyguard, Knight of New Benalia, Mesa Unicorn, Sarah Disciple, two Spore Crown Thalids, Sergeant Arms, Avon Sentry, two Bailoth Gorgers, Sarah Angels, and Thorn Elementals as our creatures. Call the Cavalry and Spore, spot, spore Swarm are, are both uh, creature making instants and sorceries. Forebear's Blade makes our creatures better, especially with our multi creature cards. And then we have Dub and Gift of Growth to make our creatures a little more, uh, have, give us some tricks in combat. Broken Bond lets us accelerate a little bit uh, and gives us the ability to uh, destroy artifacts and enchantments, which with sagas and equipment, there's a lot. And Adventurous Impulse is kind of our filter here. Early game, it lets us find colors that we need. Late game, it lets us find big things like Serangel or Thorn Elemental. So we need to include one more card. I'm thinking either Shield of the Realm or Gift of Growth. We have Gift of Growth, and then we'll put uh, Memorial to Unity in over. Uh, yes, please. Growing eight and eight with memorial to unity. So, this is our extra green source because we are slightly more green than we are white. Not by much. Twelve to ten. You go with the shield. I don't. I don't know. Like I said, I wouldn't feel bad playing the shield. Over my other trick. Now let's try it. Let's see what the, how the shield works. So, uh, this is our deck. We're very green white. Our deck has a lot of these uh, token generation things and a, a couple good payoff. Uh, we also have some good evasive creatures. Not a lot, like obviously Sarah Angel and Thorn Elemental. I don't know how strong Pingy is in any color. Uh, non-existent? I don't think there's like a, py a young Pyro, or sorry, not young Pyromancer. Uh, a, a prodigal sorcerer of any type in this set. Anyway, let's go. We're playing up to seven wins or to three losses. Uh, this is the same sort of system that Eternal uses. Um, the payoff is uh, one to three packs randomly generated at, like, not having anything to do with your win record, and then a number of gems based on your wins. Between five and six is the... Uh, infinite point if you get five point if you can average 5.5 wins you can just draft it eternally uh that wizard hmm i think i'm okay with this opponents i'm going first we're on the draw One green turns on this, and then a fifth land is Sarah. Perhaps I just play Dauntless Bodyguard and go to town. Oh, that's annoying. This has a sack ability, so now I'm always going to look like I have a, a trick. Maybe that's a good thing. My opponent seems to have something. Alright, so I do have the ability to dub this Dauntless Bodyguard if I need to. Ooh! 
Whenever Howling Golem attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. How long has this going on? been going on for? Uh, there we go. Alright, I dub thee. This golem can't stop yelling. They, they just can't. Ah, they're always going. Ah, I'll, I'll take free cards, though. I do need to draw into a land. Clearly, I haven't drawn any. Okay, that is nice to see. So let's attack him with the bodyguard. They probably are going to bounce it with Into the Royal or Blink of an Eye, I believe is the actual name of the card. Yep. Thought about sacking that to prevent the card draw. That was why I paused there. But I feel like the bodyguard is worthwhile when we have our big things like Sarah Angel in hand. I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna try to use Sprout Swarm to, to catch the Howler. Three color. What do we got going on here? Are they splashing like a... Uh... Tiani? Tiana? Okay. Howler draws a card. Still, no, God, we are like whiffing on these lands pretty handily here. They could unwind or syncopate here. Uh, bo syncopate would be cool because that would let our Sarah Angel resolve without question if we draw a land. All right, perfect. So we do need to draw a land to get the Sarah Angel to sneak by. Perfect. Sarah Angel is here. Now next turn I get a bodyguard on Sarah and go to town. They might have a Shivan Fire now. They could tap out for that or they could deep freeze. This looks like a Shivan Fire. No, this is the turtle. Okay. So the turtle has hexproof. All right, let's go ahead and play out the bodyguard. All right, it does say chosen creature, Sarah Angel. Um. What do I want to play here? I think I like just Baloth. <sighs> but I could kick that. Look at it. Mm. So let's get in for four, put our opponent uh, to the sword. I don't know how we eat that turtle. That's going to be a problem. Blast down golem with broken bond to prevent them from drawing cards. Now, you that is a, a uh, an idea. The, the reason I'm not going to do that is because I fear what the turtle could have on it. Now, the turtle usually means that they're going to play something like on Sarah's wings or uh, dub to make the turtle very big, and this is our only piece of enchantment removal. 
like this, Arcane Flight. So now the turtle's a 5-6 flyer that I can't attack into. But with Broken Bond, I can knock it out of the air, at least. Let's see if they have an all-in strategy on it. Okay, Sage of Lotnam. So let's see if they hold back the turtle. Do they think they're winning this race? I don't think they should. Alright, so... Let's go ahead and, uh... Drop it out of the skies. Ooh, do they have a... A counter? Oh, just flat unwind. Okay. Why is it 3-1 rather than 3? Because if you're representing that in real life, it becomes really... If you're using a bunch of different types of counters, it becomes really... Re Why would you do that? Excuse me? In what universe were those the lands that... And this is probably on Sarah's wings? No, this is more than that. Oh, it was the Teferi I talked about earlier. Crap. Uh, that's bad. Let's slow this down. Okay. I'm aware you can turn off auto-tap, it's just way too slow and I hate it. I would like auto-tap to be functional rather than something I should ha turn off. Okay, how the hell am I beating Teferi? Am I just throwing Thorn Elemental into Teferi? So Teferi, I might not even be able to. Oh, I wish I could bodyguard the Thorn Elemental, that'd be really good. Maybe I can just kill my opponent that way. Now, do they have a counterspell for Thorn Elemental? They do not. Well, we can't go in. I don't recall Teferi from... Teferi was in... Most every set from Mirage forward. Uh, Tefiri was a planeswalker who uh, had his own, like, uh, who had disagreements with Urza. I think Urza. No, no, no. Sorry, it wasn't up to back that far. Tefiri was a. Um, Urza Saga was a, was a student then. Oh, Milling Three. Yeah, Teferi was a student in Urza Saga, and then from, from there, I believe, is, is further on. Uh, okay, we lost a Baloth Gorger. That's fine. What is... Uh, okay. So, Thornhill... Wait, why didn't you do that in the other order? You could have done that in the other order. You could have milled me three and then... Okay. Strange. If I can... I can't kill that cold water snake. I need my sword. Okay, here's our team. Yeah, 
Yeah, Tefiri phases things out. Okay, what's the red? We have not seen anything for the red yet. Hmm. Let's skip to the good part. Okay. How do they plan on winning this game? Just with Cold Water Snapper? I have so many cards in hand right now. This is really, really bad. Do you have Jota? What is this? Urza's Ruinous Blast? I would love it if you cast Urza's Ruinous Blast right now. Of all the possible moves my opponent could make, Urza's Ruinous Blast would be the one that just immediately results in me winning the game. So I like that one. Okay, it, I, I am asking for too much for that. Why would you play Jota Unlimited? Four power flyer for four? Like, if you have the colors, it's well worth doing. Okay, the top card of my deck is the Thorn Elemental. How does Urgent's Ruinous Blast win you the game? Destroys everything but Deferi and leaves around Sarah Angel because I can make it un un unblockable. Or, sorry, indestructible. And then uh, from there I would draw Thorn Elemental. Oh, there's his Exile? Oh. We would still have the Thorn Elemental, though, as the thing if they did a Wrath. Well, then ignore me. Um. God, how do I get out of this? Let's pass. How do they win is still a question. I can win with Thorn Elemental, like, just resolved. Thorn Elemental with a sword is 10 damage, and that's enough to kill my opponent? No, not with that unicorn there. Mm. That's a tough one. What is our red? Keep up the pace. Can we kill the fairy? No. Absolutely not. Yeah, like we win by running our opponent out of cards. Do they have a syncopate? They have a syncopate. Hmm. Okay. 
Okay. We don't have infinite time either because Teferi's ult will end the game. Forget what the opponent's playing red for? We don't know. There's nothing in the grave that says red. We have not seen a red card out of our opponent. Another turtle? No, this is more. What the heck is seven? Oh, a kick Drake. Okay. Why? Why? Why is there board like this? Hurry. Why? <laughs> I can't see any of this. If only there were some space that could be used by the client to, like, fill in. I, I, they, they have the ultimate defense. Okay. I'm gonna crack the memorial. Ooh, Sarah Angel 2. Also, uh, uh, notable here, the sword is not in these five. The rest go on the bottom of the deck. I'm gonna go ahead and play Sarah Angel number two, see if they have another syncopate. Sweet. All right. <laughs> Here we go. How end the game is Teferi's halt. You gain an emblem with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. Well, that means that Teferi's ult will just say, uh, we no longer have flyers. We need to move quickly. The air will swiftly be lost. Baird, steward of Argive. Uh, Baird here is, uh, Vigilance creatures can't attack you or Planeswalker control unless they pay one for each attacking. So, we have a lot of trouble going wide now. This deck needs a Song of Frailies. Every deck needs a Song of Frailies, I suppose. So, Sword is in top 12. Ooh, is this the red? Jaius? Jitsu Chronicler with Kicker. Well, crap. That's their red? The red is a double red? Wow. And they're picking up Unwind. Okay. So I now need to bait out a counterspell before the sword can resolve. Well, I've got Call the Cavalry. Maybe that could bait it out. That would be good. So they untap two lands, meaning that they actually have the four. Unwind is the free that can counter non-creatures. Why would you tap like that? Stop that.
Damn it. Well, I found the sword. Uh... But I found Thorn Elemental, too. That's good. The odds on that adventurer's impulse of seeing the sword were around 25%, which is why I went for it. Yeah, I also couldn't control the order, which is a bit odd. You know what? I'm not done yet. Sure, keep drawing cards. That's fine. Sure, you're playing the compass. I'll die if I do that, Squirrel Token. Like, if I attacked everybody at Teferi, I would have no blockers left to for the board. Oh, that's nice. So if I can force Teferi to minus on the Thorn Elemental, that would be nice. Okay. So now it's in alt range. Also, they're on six cards in deck. Hmm. Interesting. If I can hit with Thorn Elemental on Teferi, that would be enough. Also, if I can force this into combat. I want to force the Howling Golem into combat. They have the Sage. Maybe they'll use the Sage to... Sack of uh, the compass? You gotta untap my lance, friend. Doesn't do anything, but you gotta do it. Okay. So we attack Teferi with Thorn Elemental. I think just that. <laughs> Everybody under the bus. The cool thing about Thorn Elemental is they can't, like, throw their uh, turtle under the bus. Because throwing the turtle under the bus might get them killed. <laughs> Look at this. Uh...
I wonder how Thorn Elemental's interface goes up. Yes. <laughs> Crush. Okay. So, Tefiri back on one. <sighs> Opponent has... 6-6. Six, six. So, they have three lands left in deck. Ooh, return target creature to its owner's hand. All right. I assume that's going to bounce my Sarah Angel. So I've got an idea what I have to do here. Yeah, the bodyguard doesn't, like, is unlinked anymore. Looks like the turtle's coming in. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and chump the turtle. They didn't Tefiri, by the way. They realized that they that we found the way we're winning by decking our opponent. They only have uh, four cards left in deck, meaning that it, it we can get there. As long as they don't have more answers to Sarah Angel, we should be fine. Because what will happen is I'll take eight. Uh, this is going to be tough. I need them to not have live cards, which, like, like, I'm fine with them having more creatures. More creatures is fine. Uh, can I get that golem into combat? Adele is. Oh, I do not like my opponent having a bunch more flyers. Oh, that's bad. How close to lethal is that on this turn, then? God, that's one hell of a splash. Clearly, I'm being too reasonable. Oh, my God. Ooh, the Howling Golem. Golem, it's in combat. <laughs> Okay, uh, the math has changed considerably. All right. Oh God, I can't see anything. No, I can't see what I want to target. Oh my God. All right, how much is coming in? Is this blocking anything? Oh my god. All right. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 is getting through? No. Eleven is getting through? How many timeouts do I have? Four? Five, six, seven, ten. Wait, is that getting through? Oh shit, that's getting through. Okay, so I can't do it this way.
All right. And then they're going to cast an instant and kill me with a Delis. How much damage is this right now? Are you a wizard? You're not. Okay, I'm... I'm just trying to not break my brain over this. I'm taking 10? I'm taking 10. So here they cast their, their, their trick. That brings their damage up to 11. Two cards left in deck? Oh, do they have another opt? If they have another opt, I think I die here. Um, and then a bunch of things happen, and then I die. Okay. Oh my god. That board sucked. I was very unhappy with that. With with not not with the game itself, with with how that interface at the end was just like, here's a pile of creatures. They're all very tiny, and you can't read them all. Ooh, this looks nice. I like this. Okay, let's use Adventurer's Impulse to get ourselves some lands to make this hand function a little better. Okay, goodbye dub and call the cavalry. Hello, planes. Sparring Construct. Alright, let's go ahead and play out. I'm actually going to go with Spore Crown Thalid, because next turn I could play Sarah Disciple and Adventurer's Impulse in the same turn. So green something out of our opponent. Unknown second colors. Maybe no second colors. Yes! Check this out. They pump each other. <coughs> hell yes, hell yes. They off? Oh no! The sprouts, those are mine. I want those. Oh well. Yeah, I'll take Sarah Angel out of that. Alright, let's crush in. This card is an instant, by the way. So the 1-1 one, one counter goes on the, uh, that sapling, and then everything's fine. Thanks, Muscle Sliver. But yeah, Spore Crown Thalid pumps other sap saplings or fungus. 
So, that's nice. Uh, did we have a bunch of flyers? And that should just be good, right? Like, if we just go for the beatdown in the air, like, that's a pretty good place to be. Yeah, they look like mono green. Interesting. Are they looking at like mending of dominaria or something like that? Hmm. Does not appear so. Okay. No attacks. Interesting. Well. I'm willing to see what Sarah's disciple has to say. Is it just shoot it down? Oh, sure. God, I hate that. So this gives a plus one, plus one counter and reach. Which I'm fine trading that with. Okay, so this can filter colors. Soon, Thorn Elemental. Soon. They can't fight down Sarah Angel. They don't have anything big enough to fight down. Alright, so here's seven points of damage in the air. We only need to get through with one of these two to put our opponent to seven, which is lethal to Thorn Elemental. So our opponent could be filtering to this. This is two mana for one of any color, so like they can filter anything. We'll see if maybe they do have something to filter. Our opponent, MONK, in all caps. I was about to say something about Pierce the Sky, in that I wasn't certain to expect it, because the there's no sideboarding in these games, you know? So it, it, I guess our opponent is very overshifted for anti-flying tech. Anywho, here's a card that's lethal if it hits. Hey, Gnome. How's it going? How's Mass Effect? Yeah, our opponent seems very overshifted for flyer hate. Maybe they just, they're, they're, they're that fearful. This lends credence to the mono green plan. Because, like, you know, playing Arbor Armament is not a, a, a very strong maneuver a lot of the time. Cool, cool. Yeah, mono green seems to be like betting. Oh, maybe they're not mono green. They're filtering. Wait, did they just filter two green to one green? What? What? I can't see it anymore because of the clock, but. Ah, uh, okay. I'm sorry. All right, we're up to one and one. Let's keep moving. You know what our deck is missing is the is the green white le legend. Uh, oh, dub the unicorn. Oh hell yes, four four first strike lifelink is what we call the abyss. Yes. Yes, 
good. Shauna. Shauna's their name. Okay, this could get shocked. I'm basically not willing to uh, dub it if they leave up shock mana. Hmm. Yeah, they didn't have anything. Damn. Uh, I could not do that into shock mana. That's asking for shock to occur. Ooh, the wizard's lightning. Ooh, forebear blade. Hell yeah. I'm very excited about forebear's blade. Might have to dub one of these two. What? Why? I was trying to leave up a trick, you jerk. Stop that. Ooh, blue. Okay. Skizzik, huh? That's pretty good. No blocks. <laughs> okay. So I can just block Skizik. Is this on Leaves Play or Death? Death, okay. So if they bounce the token, I won't get the Forebear Blade move. Alright, I am willing to do the Forebear Blade block. They might have a run amok? Might be a reasonable play here. They trample over her for six. Anyway, four bear moves. I need to untap so that I have Sprout Swarm up to threaten the uh, the movement. That's a pretty important piece here, I think. Okay, divination, sure. Just let me untap. Okay. So yeah, the plan here is that I go to combat looking like I have no creatures, get the double block out of my opponent, and then Spore Swarm to just, like, forebear blade move, you know? Oh! We're not double blocking, huh? Rescue? 
guard tramples, you know. Yeah, we're rescuing. Oh, then let's just play the Avon Sentry and move on. Rescue loops, huh? I guess that's seven mana infinite blockers. They can pick up Wizard's Lightning, but they need a... They can't quite... Ca well, they could cast it on seventh mana. Yeah, Trample from Forebear's Blade means that if you do that rescue block like that, you still take the hit. It's Again, it's Overwhelm from Eternal for those familiar with that. Deep Freeze! I love Deep Freeze. Ha! So I can Broken Bond and then just move the blade if they're tapped out? That seems like a way to win the game. <coughs> oh. Yes. So I get the tap out here. And then I can just blow up the deep freeze. Okay, target very carefully here. Don't target the blade. Target deep freeze. Now, the idea there was to, to get my opponent to kill my uh, minion so that I could move the sword for free. Alright. Two and one. Hooks. Oh dear, we're fighting hooks. That's the power of that blade. Interesting. I like this. I'm willing to keep. Opponents on the mulligan. Ooh. Okay. I'm gonna go with the bodyguard nude. Then we get Sarah's disciple. Next turn I can play out the memorial pretty freely, and then I'll have Sprout Swarm or Avon Sentry ready to go. So my opponent has ooh. Okay, this is good. They've missed their two and three. This is what I talked about before, where, like, aggro decks uh, in this format can really, really thrive due to how the, like, slower decks are just so slow. I'm going to save this Gift of Growth to try to get in for lethal with flying. That's my game plan. Okay, they have a lot of Nantuko uh, eateries. Husks, you might even call them. All right, so we have eight power in the air. And our opponent's at 10. This is a pretty good position.
Oh, yeah, they're just gone. Okay. Did you know evasion is pretty good and limited? All right, we got our coins there. That's nice. 300 gems, then 450, 650, 850, 950, and 750 is a draft, so... Hope they fix the end turn and then on first strike damage. Nature Hoot! Uh-oh. We're fighting against the Nature Hoot. Ooh. No, do you want to jump in the call? I didn't ask earlier, but... So, I like this hand because it has Sarah Disciple with the blade. I also like this hand because it has uh, two Sarah Angels in it. Whenever you cast a historic spell, mill two. We pre-combat this because it uh, gives us plus one, plus one. Gideon's Reproach. Gideon's Reproach. All right. That's a bit of an annoyance because we don't have a four drop unless I draw a green source. Ooh, this is... Re I really need that four drop now. Well... I'll take Mesa Unicorn. Mesa Unicorn with the sword seems good. I can afford to take these hits. I'll be able to heal it back with the Unicorn. There we go. See if Sarah Angel resolves? No, Wizard's Retort. Okay. We'll do it again. Oh, this is terrifying. Willing to trade there because I'm terrified. I am of this. Oh God, please. Oh, this is sucks. Okay, that's good. Spore Swarm should be pretty useful here. Ugh. Alright. That's fine, it's still a blocker. Okay, that's not good. So, or swarm. And then we're going to, I think, gift of growth. How do I want to do this? So we got a couple turns left. I only have one turn to draw an answer to this. Oof. Yeah, I just need to draw an answer to that next turn. Or else I die to 3-3 uh, three, three flyer. What are my answers to that? My own flyer. Well, I have that 3-2 flyer. I'm out of Sarah Angels. That's not an answer. Yeah, 
Yeah, Deep Freeze puts Sarah Angel on the ground. No abilities. So that Arcane Flight's going to be enough to kill us. Drat. I really liked that hand, but our opponent uh, went a little more wide than we did. Let's see if we're going to end on an average run at 3-3 or if we're going to head on up above... Yeah, that 2-2 Night Spell is really strong. Unassuming Ascot Cap, huh? The 2-2 Night Spell is, inc is is very, very good. Oh, I'm, I'm good on this one. Pump Spell, Board, Ser Angel, yeah, this looks good. One of our weaknesses of our deck is how little uh, interaction we have. We just have kind of, like, good creatures, and that's about it. Okay, I'm lava running. If our opponent goes super aggressive, like a two drop here, I can just go ahead and Sergeant at Arms to block. Good, thanks. Alright, I'm still gonna play the Sergeant at Arms. So, Memorial to War, huh? Alright means their hand either has no other lands or is missing a two drop. Ooh, Rakdos. Alright. We have good fours. Do I want my opponent to play a run amok? Do it. Play your run amok. That's an annoyance. In dire need of land four. But no, I was fine with the run amok because that means they weren't playing a three drop to forward their board presence. Like that goblet. You know that card is haste, right? Gift of Growth untapped. I could have used it to kill there, but I still want I don't want to use this this early. I don't think it's worth using this to it's untapped target creature. I don't want to use this to kill the Lava Runner. I wanted to catch something more... Notable? Also, they left up three mana for another run amok, and that's asking for a two for one. Post-combat War Chief is weird. That card has haste, you know? Goblins you control of haste, and then you'll see haste at the top. So that that's a strange choice. Uh, a burn spell would be pretty good here, because that would put a second instant or sorcery. Alright. That lets them attack for four there with the Lava Runner. But... Removes that from contention, so now we have Sarah Angel without Fight with Fire to kill it. Yeah, that's very likely. Most of the current, like... Lords don't usually have Goblin Warchief. Oh, God! <laughs> Shit. They actually did have the Siege Gang, huh? Alright. So Siege Gang Commander can throw goblins for shock. Also, our opponent's still not attacking us. They had a lot of damage on the board there that they have, they've just been passing up. Goblin War Chief and the Siege Gang is an age-old maneuver from Onslaught block.
They could throw two goblins at Sarah Angel. I kind of want them to attack all out so that I can spore, uh, spore swarm. going to let damage resolve there. I know that's very odd, but I want their goblin board gone. I realize that's funky. But if I went for the pump there, they would have just shocked a second time. And then uh, I would have lost my pump spell and my Sarah Angel. We need to draw, like, Thorn Elemental. That would just end the game in our favor, which would be nice. Ooh, I don't like more goblins. God, our opponent is just tribal goblins all the way down. Oh, my goodness. That's strong. Oh, this is awkward. Come on, shock it in response. Shock it right now. I can't go for this. I would die of lethal damage if I attacked there. And if I equipped, they would just shock the Sarah Disciple. So the, the issue there is that like if they, if they untap, they attack for five, and then ping, ping, shock twice, and I die. So I need to leave Sarah Disciple back. This gets really awkward really quick. I mean, Scroll Token, that's a card in a new set. Like, obviously, it's a reprint, but. Oh, crap! Edict. Oh, Edict is really bad. Damn. Like, I can Broken Bond that to kill it, but that's not enough. Hmm. I need a board now. Yeah, that's just not going to be enough. I can kill the Eldest Reborn. Yeah, so I'm dead on board here to see Jane Commander. Oof, duh. 
tribal goblins is real. They've even got really strong interaction. That's nice. Oh, hey, Skizik, I am hella dead. All right, well, the correct play here is only one thing. There's only one correct play there. All right, we end this one uh, even. Even split, three and three. So we get a random amount of packs. It's one to three, quite literally at random. It is an 80% chance for one pack, 10% uh, for two, and 10% for three, having nothing to do with your record. Oh, also it doesn't show the right amount there. And that's sort of blank. And... Ah, the four bears! They are back. Of course, we get more we get more bears. I love this sword. It's good stuff. All right, anywho, I actually think that is going to be uh it for now. I'm going to do a bunch of these tomorrow or Sunday, probably tomorrow. I think Sunday we're planning I have to check with uh Gnome to see when we're doing a different stream and then plan around that because I, I don't have a day given for that so anywho thank you all for joining I hope you had fun with that I want to learn more about the uh, the AI and see what it, what it knows and we'll learn that tomorrow um, so if you want to catch that you can always follow see when uh, I end up going live with more magic or other things uh, and if you want to support the channel, you can always subscribe and get access to cool skulls. Support the channel in that way. I just, I'm just happy you're here, though. And I'm glad you're having a good time. Anyway, thank you for joining. Have a good night, everybody.